In this video, we'll look at a combination of transformations. So knowing how a transformation affects a function enables us to graph more complicated functions. When a new function is obtained from multiple transformations, the order in which the transformations are applied is important. It's just like simplifying an algebraic expression, right? There's a correct order of operations. The same is true for graphing transformations. Horizontal transformations, that is those that affect the x variable or the inside changes, must be performed before any vertical transformations, those that affect the y variable or outside changes. Let's run through a quick list of all the different types of transformations we've talked about. We have vertical translations, that is a translation or a transformation that just moves the graph up or down. If k is a positive value, y equals f of x plus k will shift the function up k units. y equals f of x minus k shifts the graph of f down k units. So the affected variable is the y variable because there is an outside change. If we have y equals f of the quantity x plus h, then that will shift the graph of f left h units. Again, I need to make the assumption that k is greater than 0 and h is greater than 0. If we have y is equal to f of x minus h, that will shift the graph of f right h units. So here we have an inside change, which is impacting the x movement, right, the left or right movement, so that affects the x variable. Then we've talked about vertical stretches and vertical shrinks. Those come from a multiplier of the function. If the value of a is a value greater than 1, then the graph of a times f of 1 is a vertical stretch of the graph of f. And if we have a times f of x, but a is between 0 and 1, then it is a vertical shrink. But in, again, in both of those cases, the a is on the outside of the function, so that is we're multiplying the y value by some number, which is impacting the y. Then we talked about reflections, so we can have a reflection across the x-axis, and that comes from an outside change also. We're taking the opposite of y, opposite of y's or across the x-axis. So that type of transformation gives us a mirror image of the graph across the x-axis, but it is affecting the y. And then y is equal to f of negative x. That is a reflection across the y-axis, because in this case we're taking the opposite of x, which is across the y-axis. So we get a mirror image across the y-axis there. But that's impacting the x variable because it was an inside change. So when we do these transformations and combining transformations, we have to look for which variables being impacted and do them in the correct order. Our first example is g of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. So the other thing that you need to think about is what is the basic function that we are transforming. And the basic function, right, one of those seven that we talked about earlier, the basic function is f of x is equal to absolute value of x, which we know is a v-shaped graph that goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. And if you need to pause the video to get the graph of that function drawn, please do. And now we want to identify what are the transformations. So we see there is an inside transformation of minus 2. That minus 2 is going to shift the graph right 2 units. Then there is an outside change and that outside change will shift the graph up three units. And 
And so you want to take each of those points on the original graph and shift them right to and up three. Now, of course, you could use a graphing calculator to get this graph, but I want you to be able to think about it um, just mentally, what should the new graph look like. So we want to shift key points. So our point zero, zero moves right two and up three. Our point one, one moves right two, up three. Our point two, two goes right two, up three. Our point negative one, one goes right two, up three. And then negative two, two goes right two and up three. And so we see this new graph that is a rigid transformation that was just obtained by shifting the original function right to and up three. So we could say that the graph of G is the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x shifted right to and up three. Now we have part B is g of x equals two times x minus one quantity squared. So again, we need to take away all those changes from x and see what the basic function is. And the basic function is just f of x equals x squared. And so observe there are two changes. There is a minus one on the inside, so there's an inside change. And that minus one is going to shift right one unit. And then there is an outside change. And notice that the two is multiplied. So when we have a coefficient, it stretches or shrinks the graph. Because this value of a is two, it will have a vertical stretch. by a factor of two. The inside change is our x change, so that needs to come first. Our outside change is a change to y, so that will come second. So think about our basic function is y equals x squared, which is a graph of the parabola that goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, and so what we need to do now is think about how are the x and y values going to change. And it may be helpful to actually make a chart and list our original values. So we have negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. So these are on the graph of the basic function. Now, what are the points on the transformed function? So think about what we have. We have a change in the x and also a change in the y. So the inside change is going to shift our points right one unit. So that's going to increase the x value by 1. And then our y value is being multiplied by 2. So we're going to add 1 to all the x and multiply the y by 2. So if we add 1 to our x, we get negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the y values are going to be multiplied by 2. So that would be 8, 2, 0, 2, and 8. So we had to add 1 to x and multiply the y values by 2. So on the graph of g, we have negative 1, 8, 0, 2, 1, 0, 2, 2, and then 3, 8. And so we can see just from these points 
when we connect that we get a graph, a parabola, right? It's a non-rigid transformation since our graph is not exactly the same shape. But it is shifted right by 1 and it is vertically stretched by a factor of 2. And then g of x is equal to the square root of negative x plus 2. So taking away all of those changes, our basic function is f of x equals the square root of x. So notice here that we actually have two inside changes. We have an inside change of plus 2. And that's going to shift it left two units. And then we have this negative on the x. The negative on the x, if you remember, is the result of a reflection, right? Where is the opposite of x? And the opposite of x is a reflection across the y. So when we have the shifting left or right and then a reflection across the y-axis, we need to do the shifting first and then do the reflecting. And so what does our basic function look like? Our basic function is the square root of x, which goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1.4, and then 4, 2. So remember that is the half parabola that opens to the right. And so now what we want to do on our transformed graph is we're going to shift these points left to and then reflect across the y. Now it may be helpful to just do this in two stages. So let's first do what is the re result of the graph shifting left to. So we take each of our points and shift them left to. So 0, 0 would go to negative 2, 0. 1, 1 shifted left to goes to negative 1, 1. 2, 1.4 goes to 0, 1.4. And then 4, 2 goes to 2, 2. So this blue graph is the graph shifted left to. It's not our final one. Our final one comes from then reflecting these points across the y-axis. So reflecting across the y-axis, remember, impacts the x value. We have to take the opposite of the x. So negative 2, 0. The opposite of that would be positive 2, 0. Negative 1, 1 would be at 1, 1. The 0, 1.4 stays there. And then the 2, 2 would go to negative 2, 2. So we see that reflection take place. Right, so we had to flip it over the y-axis, and that's why the parabola or the half parabola is going in the opposite direction. Also check, what is the domain? The domain is negative x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we know negative x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Divide by 1, so x has to be less than or equal to positive 2. So your graph should be included to the left of the x value of 2, which it is. You can also plug into the calculator to check, but hopefully this helps you think about how you can mentally perform these transformations.